Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Dr. Jill Live. I'm here today with Dr. Porter, Dr. Patrick Porter. Super excited to introduce him, talk all about brain training and things and ways and um, pathways to optimize your performance and to beat anxiety, overwhelm, and anything that's bothering you. Um, super excited to dive into that topic today. If you have uh, missed any past episodes, you can catch us on YouTube, on my channel, or on Stitcher or iTunes or anywhere you watch or listen to podcasts. Please do stop in and rate and review um, so we can reach more listeners. And without further ado, I want to introduce my guest today, Dr. Patrick Porter, founder and creator of BrainTap. I know if you follow me much, you've heard me talk about BrainTap briefly, but today we're going to dive in, talk to the creator and founder. Um, and talk all about neural health, brain health, and optimizing performance. Um, Dr. Porter is an award-winning author, educator, consultant, entrepreneur, and speaker with 20 years of experience operating the largest self-help franchise in the world. He's become a highly sought-after expert within the personal improvement industry, having sold over 3 million of his self-help products worldwide. Dr. Porter has been on the cutting edge of brainwave entrainment technology for 32 years. If we've ever had an expert, that's today. I'm super excited. His newest brain training platform, BrainTap, is distinctively designed to activate the brain's neuroplasticity. We're going to dive in today about what is neuroplasticity and how to optimize it. The BrainTap headset uses light and sound technology in combination with Dr. Porter's proprietary guided visualization audio sessions to help people achieve brain fitness, overcome stress, lose weight, stop smoking, manage pain, accelerate learning, enjoy superb sleep, and many uh, make any number of lifestyle improvements. He's the author of the award-winning bestseller, Awaken the Genius, Mind Technology for the 21st Century, Discover the Language of the Mind, Thrive in Overdrive, How to Navigate Your Overloaded Lifestyle, among others. Welcome, Dr. Porter. I'm so happy to have you on the podcast today. It's great to be here, Dr. Jill. Thank you. Thank you. And we met for the first time at 8 p.m. with amongst all the symposium, all the optimization. That's quite a place. And there's lots of technology, lots of things going on. You have clearly some amazing experience. And I always love story like what, how did you get into brain health? How did you get your PhD? Let's go way back and tell us just a little bit about where did you grow up? And then how did you get into this industry? Yeah, I grew up in Battle Creek, Michigan. I was very fortunate. It was the first place in the world to have a health food store. Dr. Wow. Kellogg's had it there. So my mother actually sought out an iridologist because there were nine of us. We were all spazzes and they wanted to put us on medicine. And my mom didn't go for that. She basically got us off all the sugars, all the dyes, everything we know to do today. But this was done in the in the 60s. So if you can imagine that. And so we in with that, that really started our journey. And then my dad, who was a chronic alcoholic, he got help with something called the Silva Method, which is yes. a uh, meditation practice. He was one of the first Silva instructors in America. He studied with Jose Silva. Yes. And my brother did as well. I wasn't old enough yet uh, when they were taking the training, but I attended those classes every other weekend growing up. My dad would go do it all around lower Michigan. And uh, it helped him to stop drinking and uh, really changed the direction of our whole life. Uh, I went to school for electronics uh, first at a school called Ferris State. And then I went to um, Louisiana Baptist Christian where I got my master's and my PhD in psychology. I don't use much of that anymore, but it, it was uh, what I do now is um, basically work in the self-help field. My, my franchise, which I sold in 2002, was a weight loss, stop smoking franchise. And we had 108 locations when I sold it. Unfortunately, it went out of business in 2013. Um, that's why I'm back out. Because so, yeah. so you know, when, when we're, uh, I sold it in a way that uh, I I thought I was going to be set for life, and I was just going to speak and do my thing. But then yeah. when it went under, I thought I want to create a new version of my MC Square. That's what it was called in 1989 when we got a. We were the best new gadget of the year uh, at wow. the Consumer Electronics Show. And so that was a big move for us. We're actually going to be there this year again. We, we partnered with Human Touch Chair, and we'll be at the Consumer Electronics Show again. We've got a few awards. In 2020, we got an award there for the best sleep app. Wow. So we have, it's called Sleep RX. So we, we help people with sleep. And basically, I've been doing a lot of research now. We have a lot, of, I'll, I'll talk about some of that while we're going through it, but we have uh, seven continents right now doing research on brain tap. And the nice thing is those are all done by third party universities. Uh, and we just beat out one of the things for your listeners. We just beat out opioids in three different studies at the pharmaceutical college down in Brazil. 
on uh, for fibromyalgia to show wow. that it could help reduce the, the equipment was actually designed back in the 80s for pain control yeah. you know when you when you lower your uh stress uh like the adrenaline cortisol norepinephrine then your stress uh those stress hormones are blocking your capacity to be pain free so when you can lower those your body naturally will create its own opioids and create a pain free state for you Wow. Okay. Dr. Porter, already I'm like, just like biting at the bit. There's so many fascinating things. I want to go back just briefly to that Silva experience. I, for years have had trouble with the classical meditation, but I've worked completely on the Silva method and that visualization and this realm, I think of it as like creative lucid dreaming, you know, like, and creating your own reality that for me has been so profoundly transformative that I, and I don't know if it's just because my brain goes so fast that it's harder to slow down. And you can tell me what's going on, but I will just tell you, I love that you say that because I remember finding that and learning that and being like, oh, this is where I meditate. This is my place. And it's, I think for some creatives, it's actually a much more healthy space than just pure emptying the mind, right? And you know why you're, you're right. like going to tell me more. Yeah, Most people, unfortunately, when we measure their brain before and after they meditate, yeah. we very rarely saw someone didn't stress out their brain yes. because the, the monkey mind does more yes. damage than it does safe. So with, with Silva, you're going to alpha and you're going to level, they call it. So you're, yes. you're that's, Think of that as neutral for the brain. If we can get the brain just to go to neutral, a lot of wonderful things can happen in the body. The, the stress hormones, you know, they just drive the body out of regulation. They cause the body to exacerbate things like fear, frustration, anxiety, dementia, Alzheimer's. Those things just spiral out of control with stress. Oh, I love this. And again, this was almost accidental for me because even before Silva, I knew when I was in that space and I didn't know what it was called before magic happens, right? Because I'm in such a real, like, just like meeting the right people and getting apart all the random things of life that are random or not random. When I'm in that state and I can go there at will, it's like, life is so beautiful. I see miracles everywhere. So I love, and I want to talk about that because I'm sure it relates to everything else you're doing, but I love that. And then did you say you're one of nine children? Yes, I'm number three in the in the in the uh, in the oh. order. And did you have brothers or sisters above you? I had a brother, Michael, and a sister who was above me, and then the wow. rest. Of, I had three sisters yeah. and five brothers. Wow! So we're one of two. Both of us are large families. I was in Illinois, one of five, and there's something. I'm in the middle. I'm for oldest girl, but second oldest. But there's something about that too that I love. That probably because you kind of have to. I mean, first of all, you learn how to deal with conflict because you have a lot of people in your house, right? And then, um, and clearly, your mother and father were amazing people, and all that your dad went through. But I love that little bit because there's this creativity and thing that comes with. Not that we all have to have big families, but there's just a really neat dynamic from that and your Midwestern upbringing that I can already see has been a help to you. So then um, you went into, elect, uh, you said electrical, what kind of thing was yeah, it? Yeah, I went into electronics. I loved, um, I was kind of when when Star Trek came out and Star uh -huh. Wars and all those, I was just like, hey, I feel like I'm from the future. I'm just yeah, in this, yeah. this past experience. So I love doing that. And when I went to school, of course, there wasn't electronics like there are today. They were yeah. It was more like solenoids and it was yes. more for working at factories. And um, that wasn't my thing. And I kept helping my dad at the seminars. Yeah. And he said, you know, you should just go back to school and get your degree and do this with me. Mm -hmm. And so we we just kept doing, yeah. you know, the seminars on the weekends. What was the part that you first like, let, like that you really liked? Because clearly you have a very analytical mind that can solve problems. I can see that with the, and, and that's a great, makes a great entrepreneur. But what else about what, what your direction that you took was the thing that you loved to do most? Well, I found that uh, because I was held back in second grade, I tell the story and awaken the genius. I believe everybody has genius potential. I was a creative. So yeah. I loved to write and draw. I had an art scholarship and I could care less about math and science. But as soon as my dad taught me, to um, my dad has had a philosophy once he got help. If we got in trouble, we didn't get sent to our room just to think about what we did. My dad would send us to the room with a book. And the book that I got sent to the room with most and mostly was As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. Oh, what an so, amazing father. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I, and I'd have to come out of the room and tell him how I was going to apply those principles. And of course, at first you're like just BS and just trying exactly. to talk with your friends, but eventually it it's it sunk in yeah, and I started yeah. to realize, hey, uh, I love helping people. I, I love putting together teams. Even in high school, I put together the first weight loss, weight, weight lifting team. I put a wow. running team together, uh, even though I had a lot of brothers and sisters, um, yeah. you know, in I was a, in between uh, the, the sisters. So I didn't have a lot of brothers to and my older brother was 
he went off to military when I was in high school. So I had to get my friends and, you know, do the things. I found people that want to do the same things I did to be healthy. Yeah. And, um, you know, we did a lot of supplementation even back then. My coach, I remember him saying, Patrick, don't take that supplement out in public because they're going to think you're doing drugs. And right. what I was doing, I was just doing brugies, had a lot of niacin yeah. in it. So, I, you know, it, it would it would turn me red, right? So the, the, uh, <laughs> and he, he thought I was doing, and I, and I said, well, that's just getting, you know, I ran the quarter mile. So yeah. I, I believe that it helped me get uh, oxygen. You were making muscle. NADPH and more NAD from that niacin too. Right? Yeah. Like, oh yeah. my God, I love that. That's amazing. It's so interesting too, because there's so much similarity. I grew up with a, a nurse for a mother. We had our own farm and lots of organic food and lots of like interest in before it was cool, like for farming and organic produce and then healing yourself. And so I definitely had that bent too. And I always joke, I kind of infiltrated the classical medical system, the allopathic system, because I thought here's a great system, but my heart and mind were much more the, the, the natural. So then obviously after that, you, you worked with your father a little, and when was your first book or your first invention? What, how did well, that... in, in 19, uh, in, in 1990s, mm -hmm. I was asked to do a program for the state of Arizona for DUIs. I worked for a group called the Arizona Health Council. And so I was writing programs for second time offenders. Uh -huh. It was called Hidden Solutions. Uh -huh. And um, my the guy that eventually Jerry was his name, Jerry DeShazo, he wanted to publish it. He said, if you write this book, I'll publish it. So on a napkin, I wrote it out. I wrote out the contract. And I said, if, if I get this book completed in six months, you're going to publish it. And he signed it at the table. And in five months, we had the book done, my wife and I. Wow. And um, it's a really fun book to read. We wrote it in an accelerated learning fashion. What was the we, title of that one? The first called Awaken the Genius. Yes. Okay. All, the, all of my books are written in a way. One of the things with self-help books, yeah. if you want to super read or super learn, what you do is you go through and you read, you turn all of the italicized and bold all into questions. And mm -hmm. then you just do that first. You don't even try to remember anything. Then you go back through and just answer those questions. And when you do, you'll remember the content of that book much faster. But what I did was I wrote my book that way. So that if somebody's reading it, they're actually, they can get through that book very quickly, even though it's 232 pages, yeah. because it's written to accelerate your reading. Everything has a right brain story and left brain logic, right brain story, left brain logic to, to get it in. Cause we may, we're emotional beings, but yeah. we justify things with logic. So the, the, and I did the same thing with thrive and overdrive and a couple of my other books. Absolutely amazing. Now, I don't know if you know, I'm getting ready. My book is coming out in March and it, it makes me wonder if I accidentally did that because I thought we have to tell a story, right brain creative, right? And the whole thing is kind of a prescriptive memoir. But then I wanted the practical left brain. So I created these columns and call outs and like rule, like you just flip through and just read the call outs and get all the practical left brain. Or you can dive into the story, like a box of chocolates and like, yeah. so, and I didn't know how to do that. But I was like, I think this is really important to have yeah. both. And it sounds like what you've clearly proven. Yeah, especially, especially in self-help, because a lot of people who are struggling will read those books and they're not reading it, you know, they do need to be a little bit of a novel because people yeah. want to, yeah. they want to hear your story and, you, and mm -hmm. they're interested in that. And then you just slip in a few of those nuggets every now and then, and then their life's changed. They don't realize what happened because wow. they emotionally bought in while they were yeah. reading. Amazing. And of course, we know manifesting is all about that emotional context, right? So then you went, I mean, you've written all these books and I'm going to read them all now because I didn't know about you before I was all this. And then uh, take us to brain tap. Like you've had a clear journey of some other things to, uh, before that. Um, and then I'll tell you real quickly after you're done of how I know about brain tap. Okay. All right. Yeah. In 2013, I was living in the Bay area and uh, my wife and I, we just had our second grandson mm -hmm. or our only grandson, but our second grandchild. And my wife said, Hey, I'm going to go move to New Bern, North Carolina. You can come if you want. You know, it's one of those things. And so I said, well, if we're going to leave Danville, which was nice uh, and move to North Carolina, I said, then that's where we're going to start the business because it was, we had a, we had a clinic in, in Pleasanton, just outside the Pleasanton mall there in, in the Bay area. And we ran that for about five years. I sold that. What kind we of a clinic? What were you doing? We, we did, uh, it was therapy. We, Got it. we okay. had people come in and we also had a lot of the, what would be called biohacking. If you yes. came to my clinic here in New Bern, I had seven clinics at one time. So I have a really nice biohacking lab uh -huh. that we only use for our, our staff, really. We have four clinics here in the area. We're a very small town, yeah. uh, 38,000 people, but we have four doctors that we allow them to send their patients in to use our, we have a big light bed. We have uh -huh. infrared saunas. We yeah. have vibration acoustic. I mean, we have... Anything you would think of it. The only thing we don't have that I'm looking into, there's two things. One is hyperbaric. Yeah. And then one is uh, the, the, the cryo. 
Yeah. Because I'm doing a lot with those. I, we don't have those. Um, and I'm trying to justify them because we don't see the general public, but I want them for myself. You know, so the- Totally um, understand. I've got my Matt PMF Matt here and all kinds of biohacking. <laughs> yeah, so we, we have, like if you came to my upstairs when COVID happened, my my upstairs where my pool table is looks like a biohacking spot because I kept bringing stuff home because I wasn't getting down to the office. <laughs> right, you're like- I need to so, Someday I'll bring it back to the office. But the, um, you know, I spend two hours every morning getting ready for the day and just- taking care of myself because we're not getting any younger. I want right. to, I want to keep my cells, you know, the cells active and energized. Yes. And, but what happened to me was when we, we moved here, we drove in and we thought, well, we're, we're going to set up a spa. We, we set up a spa called the Solantis Light Spa. It was a, it was, we were going to set up another franchise kind of doing a biohacking, you know, one of these rejuvenation kind of spas. And we had 200 active clients and it was going good, but then brain tap took off. And we said, you know, we got to make a decision. Either we're going to be a spa because it took a lot of energy or we're going to do brain tap. And I'm glad we did brain tap because it's just been taking off like crazy. We're in 120 countries. And wow. uh, I mean, the, the, I mean, A4M was our best event of our life. You know, it was, it was yeah. awesome. We, we, we had uh, 16 chairs there where people could try out brain tap and awesome. we were busy the whole time. And Amazing. I designed a piece of technology to go with it called the NeuroCheck, where we can take five minutes and we can tell somebody nine different parameters of the nervous system. And then we can show them pre and post, uh, you know, how they're doing. And we can show them the effects of sleep or not sleep, you know, and things of that nature. So it basically builds compliance for yeah. our for our clients because they they need it measured. Right. So they yeah. they want to know something's actually happening in in the process. Um, you know, we were going to be a, just a small business making some equipment. Me going out now, we're we're huge, and we're bigger than we're three times bigger than my franchise was already. Wow. And it's you know we've been doing it since 2013, so it just keeps expanding and growing. And um, you know, one of the nice thing is we have 3,000 clinics out there that are using it in their clinical practice. So we're helping people every day doing that. I mean, we've had over. I think the last time we looked, it was over 8 million listenings to the app. So, wow. and the app's only a little over two years old. So it's- uh, Dr. Porter, I just have the biggest smile because I love, and, and I hate that you had to have a difficulty with the franchise, but what a blessing because look what's happened. And I'll tell you what my experience was with, I'm a mold expert. So I deal with a lot of mold toxicity and patients have massive limbic activation. And we have to deal with that on some level in order for them to get well. And it's hundred percent. And you'll probably understand this, but as I was researching for my book, um, I, I came across the research about the inhalation of chemicals and the limbic system to their career form plate and actually accentuates the hypothalamic, um, you know, the, um, limbic activation through the, all the amygdala and all that mm -hmm. to say that it's literally a, chem I realized I saw this in practice. I saw every single person, 100% who had mold issues, <clears throat> even if they've done the work, they've done therapy, they've done NLP, whatever kind of thing they've done to have neuroplasticity, they still have a trauma response. And like, what is the deal here? Cause even if people are very, you know, connected or, you know, whatever things they have done. And then I realized it's a chemical response. It's a chemical trauma response and it's in the literature. And so for me, on my list of limbic retraining, right at the time, is brain tap but how cool to meet you and to so how did that come about tell us the story of brain tap and then i want to go into people listening what's brain tap what is it right well when we when we created the brain tap at first it was a pair of like they're like sunglasses that yeah. had leds in them and we used those for years but in 2013 i wanted to build it all into one headset it used to be modulized so think of like a stereo with three different yeah pieces and because of technology of course electronics all shrunk so now we can fit it all on one side of the ear so now we in plus with the you know with the app that's on the phone you can basically the app does most of the work now yeah. so the the app drives the lights and we put lights in the ears uh, we were doing a study with and i'm also the dean of brain-based medicine at quantum university so we wow. did a study on mold toxicity and yeah. helping people overcome it and the the I didn't do this. I didn't do whatever the doctor did to do the, the to clear out the mold. But their big idea was uh, people get psychosomatically triggered. Yes. Even though they don't have the thing, and it makes sense with the amygdala yes. being hijacked and then emotions taking over. But but what we did with autistic children, we were doing a study in 
parents were going, there's no way my kid's going to watch, look at that. He's, they're going to go crazy and things like that. And of course, a lot of these kids have mold and things like that that are, that are going on. They're very sensitive. And those are neuro, like you're saying, they're, they're, those are neurotoxins yes. that are taking over. They basically hijack the person's yes. identity and who they are. They're not the right, they're not the same right. person because it's right. almost like a reconfiguration of the hard drive. And but what we decided, we, there's something called the Nogier frequencies. Dr. Nogier was an iridologist. And there's, pe there's, there's places in the ear where all the junction points of, uh, that come through the ear, when you're like acupuncture, you can do needles in there and get different parts of the body. So our doctors were using lasers to do this. And I said to my manufacturer, I said, can we make a set of earphones that have lights in them that would equal the dosage of a laser? So it's low level light, but it takes 20 minutes to get the same millijoules as a laser. So you can do it in a minute with a laser. But when, when you're wearing the headset, it takes 20 minutes. But what it does is it bathes the ear and then through something called photobiomodulation, it moves throughout the whole body. So we need to, we need to right now more than ever, we need to energize the brain. Yes. And the brain needs ATP production, vasodilation, blood flow, nitric, nitric oxide release, all those things that light does. So the best way to get it into the brain is through the eyes. Your, yes. your eyes have over 300 times more mitochondria than even the brain. The brain has more overall, but the eyes, the eyes literally take in light and transmit light. We now know this as a true fact. And maybe later we can talk about the body being a light being, we're, we're all light beings and there's science out there that shows it. But the in the process of what's going on, we, we were going, how can we tune the body up? So if you think about when you said alpha going to level with Silva, that's like going to the river or going to an ocean or going to a lake. When you're sitting beside it, the evoked potential of that water is 10 hertz frequency. So that's why people go there and they just relax. Yes. They just chill out. And when we go to a mountaintop like where you're at, and I love Colorado, that's where yeah. I, I convinced my wife that I was romantic. We went up to Breckenridge when the tree lighting was back in, this was back in, gosh, I don't know, what was it, 80, 88 or 89. And um, we were up in the mountains, but the mountains, that tree line where the tree lines are, it's about 7.8 hertz frequency, yeah. the Schumann frequency. Yes. That's, they say that's the frequency of the planet. Yeah. So when you're, these are two different frequencies that when we cross over them, the brain reorganizes itself. We have a gamma burst and we have a delta burst. And most people don't even talk about this, which is, it, they talk about, um, for instance, when Lou Tai did the experiments in, at MIT with a 40 hertz frequency and dementia, I went and visited her and I said, well, what's happening with that? Because they didn't do any follow-up studies. Right. I know it's going to happen. After they do that for a while, the brain's going to just omit it. It's going to be like living next to a paper mill. You're going to, basically, the people living there don't smell that paper mill yeah. like everybody else does, even though uh, order has mass, right? They, it's affecting them, but they don't know it. And what I told them was, each one of ours changes just a little bit every time. So the brain can't learn the pattern. And I tell people go, what do you mean to learn the pattern? Our brain is so great. Like Rain Man, the movie Rain Man, when Dustin Hoffman, they dropped the toothpicks on the ground and he says, a oh, thousand, one hundred and forty three. And they go, how'd you know that? He counted them. Well, our brain does the same thing. Our eyes take in literally 10,000 pieces of information every second, but it feeds the brain over two to three million pieces of information every second. Yeah. So neuroscience would tell us we're making this all up anyway. So, you know, what, it, where's that information coming from? It's because our, we're always assuming we're always making assumptions because life is happening so fast. Right. So what we did is we started to put together this pattern. What, what could we do? And when science caught up with us, yeah. because in the eighties, we only had biofeedback, right. we had to measure skin temperature, respiration, heart rate. Uh, it was very rudimentary you know if, if i went to biohacking with that now they'd laugh at me you know, right, it's, right it's like nothing but but back then that was really big stuff you know mm -hmm. if you got somebody's hands warm their headaches went away yeah that still works today right. but what's nice with neurofeedback is we can measure brain waves and now we know for instance when we're in an alpha state we're our, we're telling our brain to create more acetylcholine yes. which is the feel good love kind of neurotransmitter when we go into theta, we're telling our brain to create more GABA. That happens to be the precursor to DMT. So all of these things, and there's, of course, 54 different neurotransmitters. So as we go through these cycles in the brain, our neurological bank account gets reset, yeah. where when we get mold or in, in the other thing is with, with toxins, we, we talk about toxins all the time. It's either thoughts, traumas, or toxins. Yeah. That's what's causing the trouble. 
And most people don't realize if they're not getting level four sleep, mm -hmm. the, their brain is not detoxing. You know, when, when we tell the doctors that, I mean, in 2015, when American Scientific came out with that glialymphomic system, you know, they yes. just finally found it. I mean, when you went to school and when I went to school, our physiology books, the lymph system oh, didn't go past the lymphatics, exactly. You know, exactly. You know? So we're learning so much more, even about our body right now. You know, it's like we were taught everywhere there's a blood vessel, there's a lymph vessel, but somehow the brain missed out, which right. we now know isn't true. It's it's just like that um, blood brain barrier. Yes. So if we can get that deep level relaxation, we can get that deep level sleep. Now we're cleaning out our brain. We don't have, I know for a fact now, there's a lot of evidence out there that shows if you have a leaky gut, you have a leaky brain because we yeah. have brain biome and we have gut biome. So we work very, my, my philosophy that most people will hear on podcasts that I've done is, and I'm writing a book with Rashika Sakri, who's the ex, uh, uh, she was head of uh, health at Google. We're writing a book about the three waves of wellness. Number one is nutrition because you can't outthink a bad diet. You know, so many people think I'm just going to work on my brain. Like you said, they right. did NLP, they did this. Yeah. Well, you got to clear out the toxins. You know, right. if somebody right. came in to see us, first thing we did was we put them on a 21 day detox yeah. because their liver was just, you right. know, polluted. I mean, you can't get rid of the fat. You're just going to basically going to have a backup in the system. Number two is you got to move and breathe. Yes. That's really important for the brain. You know, the reason that we have such a big brain is we decided to stand up and look along the horizon and, and balance ourselves. And as we get, you know, better looking, more intelligent with age, that brain wave that actually atrophies is called SMR. It's, it's between the beta brain and the alpha brain waves. And it's the, S, the SMR is for distibular system. Uh -huh. So we, we train people to do that in the morning because we call it digital coffee because it will trigger a little cortisol, mm -hmm. you know, and give people that, that natural rush. Uh -huh. And they, you know, it's important that we, we use the cycles of the sun. I, I like to tell people, I, I looked at, when you think about brain tap, I think, what did they do in ancient traditions and how can we mimic that and do it with modern technology? Right. When we were, uh, when we were hunters and gatherers at the end of the night, we would build a fire. We'd watch that fire. Most people don't realize every fire crackles at 10 Hertz frequency. Oh, Wow. So while you're watching the fire, your brain waves are calming down, your body is being bathed in acetylcholine, you're basically winding down. Now, very maybe occasionally somebody would go get some more wood, but more than not, when the fire is burned out, they go to bed. Yeah. You know, they don't turn on another channel and keep watching TV till three right. o'clock in the morning. You know, so we we have, you know, and what most people don't realize with the brain is the brain is tuned to the light of the sun. So when we think about mel melatonin and things of that nature, melatonin isn't just for sleep. It's for every cell of the body, right? So every hour before 12 that we get in bed is we're two hours after 12. So if you really want to sleep better, just adjust your time. Get up at four in the morning and go to sleep at nine or go to sleep at 10 and get up at five or whatever. And that's what I like to do. That way in the morning, nobody's calling me. I'm on the East yeah. Coast. So, you know, when I was on the West Coast, there was no safety zone, you know, right, right. Oh, Best time to write is that morning, right? Um, amazing. Oh, my goodness. So many pearls here. So a lot of my listeners have had a chronic infection like Lyme or Epstein-Barr reactivation or all those things, or the toxic load, which we talked about. And as we already talked about, mold particularly is very neurotoxic and can sabotage personality, can sabotage mood, absolutely. I mean, I'll tell you a real quick story. I have a, a neurologist friend who lived in a house in Texas that was very full of stachybotrys toxic. Her and her daughter saw me, she's doing well. But the story goes is that later they found out there was a homicide and a suicide in that house prior. And there was this black mold. And there's no doubt in my mind that those were related to the um, chemistry of that toxic insult. And it's crazy, isn't it? But you know, it's true just as well as I do. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, look at almost every mass shooter was eating candy. I mean, a neurotoxin is sugar. I mean, yeah. you know, if that was, they say if it was on the market today, it'd be a, it'd have to go through FDA approval. Right. Because it changed. I said, they go, what do you mean? I could just give it to kids at a birthday party and yeah, see what happens. See what happens. You know, <laughs> you know the, uh, you know, the, the, they never slow down the sugar, right? They just right. give it to them and then they wonder why they're getting in trouble. Yeah. So the, the key, I think with uh, toxins, we're not going to avoid toxins in our right. environment. So we have to have periods where we're not just loading our body up with food. I like intermittent fasting. It doesn't have to be every day, but yeah. do some of that because the body is the subconscious. Yeah. You know, your brain is writing its code into the body, you know, and I love Louise Hay because that's yeah. the book my dad had us read too, you know, growing up and you can heal your life. 
Yes. And it always made sense, even though sometimes they didn't want to believe it, you know, when something was right. happening. But if you're really honest with yourself, you know, this happens to everybody. We all have kind of a, a format that we follow. Right. No, interesting, as you mentioned, Rain Man and some of the subconscious. One thing I've always tried to explain is in medical school, we're taught a very analytical, old analog way of uh, processing um, left brain, extremely like logistical pattern recognition. I was an engineer background like that. And I always say that works really well for hundreds, maybe thousands of pieces of data in a medium amount of time. And then as I've grown in my skill and in some of the things you were talking about here, what I find is the power of the subconscious to come to, just like you're mentioning with Rain Man, I can take <clears throat> literally millions of pieces of data in a fraction of a second and have a knowing that's not beyond the conscious knowing. And what I'll do is I'll you still use that left brain to prove and to show the test and everything, like the science we need to prove what we already know about this. But this power that I found, and I'm teaching patients now to go there because that's where the healing happens too, right? And the because our subconscious will put anything into play that we give it again, you know. So I learned that a while back and it's been so profound in my practice because I can come to conclusions and answers that I never logically could have figured out. And it always 100% of the time, you know this, 100% of the time I'm right on because that subconscious is so powerful. But how would you teach the average person, whether it's a doctor or teacher or an entrepreneur, how do we tap into that spot of knowing? Because there's a powerful amount of knowledge in our subconscious. What I tell people is when somebody looks at the river, like we have a river right down from us, the Tar River. So if I said that Tar River, it's never the same river. We call it the same name, but it's different every day. Our body, when they came out with the genetic um, map, right, they only got 1%. Now, mm -hmm. they didn't get the genetic map, right? I mean, could you imagine going to your boards and pass 1% one per, one percent right. of the questions? But in, in 2018, they actually found out that that 99% changes every 40 seconds. So that means the molds that you have exposure to, the food you have exposure to, the thoughts you're thinking, the environment you're in, literally everything has to do with how you show up. Yes. And what we now know is how quickly can you change? I have a saying that I got from Mike Tyson, actually, when he said, everybody has a plan till they get hit. You know, the, the problem is how does your body respond when you get hit? Because we're all going to be exposed. Yes. This is a world where I live in the South, right? So uh, we had this house checked, you know, for mold. And um, I had my daughter actually got out of an apartment because she started mm -hmm. having headaches. I said, you got mold in that house. Yeah. And so we had a test kit. We had a tester come out. He says, yes. And they gave the, the landlord everything they needed to change. They said, leave. So that landlord probably just rented yeah. it out to somebody else. Exactly. And didn't even care. And they, because people think that's just mold. That's not doing anything. But the reality is it's changing you, who you are. You mm -hmm. know, the, Words themselves can change yeah. 2,300 gene expressions. So just the words. So when you go and you start feeling bad and you start using low energy or low vibration thoughts, that translates into hedonistic behavior and that spirals out because a lot of times these people will start eating junk because yeah. they're, they're meeting their, their energy is meeting their environment yes. at that level. We need to bring them above that level so they can realize that, hey, they need to, first of all, get out of that environment yeah. and then, um, you know, give themselves permission to heal. Oh my goodness. I love that. And you're speaking on one thing that's kind of, there's not a lot of talk about. I know you'll get this. I have seen over and over in my own life and my lives and my patients, mold will sabotage insight. It's this bizarre, evil thing. Um, but it truly, literally, like even after years and years and becoming the expert in mold, I can still be in a new exposure. And later I can look back and, oh, that was mold clearly. But in the midst of it, it's sometimes hard to have that insight. Any thoughts on why that sabotage occurs? Because it's very bizarre to me. It's almost like it helps its survival, but it literally takes away insight. Yeah. Well, I don't know why it's taking away insight, but it is going to, it's going to, that amygdala is going to hijack. You know, that's yeah. what happens when we get angry, right? Yeah. We get angry with somebody and then afterwards we go, dang, I wish I wouldn't have got so angry. Oh, see, that. that's what it is. Then it's probably the chemical hijacking of the limbic system. And then you yeah. override the frontal cortex, right? Yeah. Okay. And then the executive function goes out the yeah. window. And yeah. so all those things about you're just, now you're in basically survivor mode. I call it a survivor brain or a thriving brain. So most people are running around with their survivor brain, which means they're not digesting or metabolizing their food. They're not rebuilding their body in a healthy way. They're basically every day is like they it's like pulling a parachute all day long and they get to their they get to their easy chair at the end of the day, they pass out, they drink their six beers, and they wake up in the morning, they rinse and repeat and do it again. And they don't realize that it's that lifestyle that's causing it. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that your foundation is that too, because 
um, uh, and, and even your feedback on what, that's what I've always done right now. I have the aura ring, there's other things out there, but just that feedback on say, I do PMF mat, how does it affect my deep sleep? And when do I go to bed? And so there's clearly for me, I'm always thinking about what intervention did I do today to optimize performance or sleep? And then did it work? And was it effective? And you've done that your whole life. Um, back to brain tap. So a lot of my patients, like I said, mold issues, Lyme issues, whatever. How could they use it? Give us just practical tips on, um, is it, we, is it we have a Lyme device? program. Yeah, go yeah we have a Lyme program. We don't have a mold specific program, but we do have one for Lyme because we have a lot of doctors working yeah. with that. And it's more about, we. it's something called psychoimmunology. Yeah. So for those listeners that aren't familiar, that means your psychology actually affects your immune system. Immune you system, have a thinking right. immune system, right? Yeah. So if we have optimistic you know, there's a reason when you think about uh, the doctors don't get sick as much, yeah. you know, because they're above that, the illness, you know, and although some do, of course, yeah. but most of them, it's like, that's not me. That's so if you think if you can bring your your attitude up or your positiveness yeah. up, your immune system actually functions better. We I tell people that a lot of times when the body white marker cells are kind of like Navy SEALs. Yes. If they have something to fight. They're really good. But if they don't, they fight each other. Right. Yes. So if you're if you're basically systematically triggering that response without the stimulus. That that can build its own program. You know, yes. most people don't realize what happened with Pavlov and his dogs when he did the study ringing the bell. They all know about that, but they don't know that the study kept going. They started the dog started salivating when the guards came in to open the door to ring the bell. Then they started salivating when the guards walked down the hall to open the door to ring the bell. And then when they stopped the experiment, the dogs continued to salivate at six in the morning. Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, that's what happens to our body over and over again. So that's why we need to clear out our brain, our thinking, and yeah. really resolve that. And what BrainTap does too on a physical level is it's going to bring light into the brain. Sound does it too. You know, sound brings energy. You know, if you've ever been to a, a party and maybe you didn't really want to go there, but your significant other had you go. And then they're playing songs from your high school. And pretty soon you're tapping your toe. You're getting ready to dance. Yeah. And they go, I thought you didn't want to go. Well, that music yeah. actually got the cells moving. Yeah. So with light, it's much quicker. And it creates that it creates that vasodilation, that blood flow, circulation. Everywhere there's a blood vessel, there's a lymph vessel built. Mm -hmm. So imagine every time you do brain tap, you're building new supply lines for your brain to bring nutrients into the brain and building new supply lines to move the toxins out of the brain. And this happens, you know, it needs to happen all the time because after 28, we're in a, we're in neuro pruning big time. We're always in neuro pruning, but we want to keep that That's why it's really important to uh, do new things, different things, yeah. try drive home from work differently, you know, color with the left hand, or if you're right-handed, you know, all these things just to get your neurology, keep it exercised. Yeah, neuroplasticity at its best. I have a funny story that really accentuates the um, the fighting the immune system. Um, I went through cancer at 25 and then Crohn's at 26. And it was always, I'm going to fight this. I'm going to overcome this. I'm going to beat this. And I did. And then I got mold toxic in my late 30s and I was fighting. I was like, I'm going to overcome this. I'm going to figure it out. One day I'm walking behind my house and I had this real epiphany like, wait, this fighting analogy is killing me because the problem with mold is it triggers innate immune system. And just as you said, it fights itself. And that battle inside of us with our innate immune system is actually causing more harm inside. And I just had this aha, like, oh, wait, this fight analogy that saved me all my life is now going to hurt me. And I thought, okay, how can I meditate on something different? And I took the little minions from Despicable Me, the little yellow guys. And I thought I started meditating on those as my immune system, where they're just whistling and holding hands and escorting the mold out, but with the most friendly, joy. <coughs> attitude. And I literally day by day by day would do my walk and meditate on minions and my immune system. And literally, you know, the, how this works, my immune system shifted. And that was one of the most profound things in how I got well was literally shifting that fight analogy and, and shifting how my, and I literally feel like I reprogram, reprogram my immune system through minions. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I think that's great. I mean, there's a lot of stories about, uh, in our cancer program, we use the one with sheep to yeah. eat up the cancer. And there's a lot yeah. of different metaphors people use that, yeah. that it works. So whatever works for you to give you that positive. Right. Attitude, it's like whatever you, you can know. do to, oh. yeah. if you, as long as you feel empowered, yes. one of the things about depression, depression is lack of hope. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you feel like you don't have any hope because you feel so miserable, what I like to tell people is right now, if you're going through that right now, everyone's going through the dark night of the soul at some point. You know, when, when Campbell said about the hero's journey, we're all getting our superpowers. Yep. So 
and when my dad got his superpowers, he helped me. We've helped millions of people. You know, you never know what's going to happen. You know, it was our, it's when we overcome those limitations and we empower ourselves. And then one of the natural parts of the hero's journey is you got to share that story. Yes. You got to get out there and share it. So a lot of people don't go that far, but you know, every person out there, I believe has a story to tell mm -hmm. and has, can help people because they know people. You yes. know, if we're going to change this world to make it a more peaceful, you know, loving place that isn't so fear based. We got to start trusting each other again, you know, and things of that nature. Oh, brilliantly said. Um, this is so fun. I could talk to you for hours. What takeaway would you give us out of all the wonderful stuff we've talked about for someone listening and maybe they are depressed or anxious or really struggling? What's your one takeaway? You, it might not be your mind. A lot of people, it could be your physiology. It could be like you're saying, could be a neurotoxin. It might not be mold. It might be Lyme. It might be something else. Start doing the easy things first. Get those off the list. And what will happen is start physically exercising, moving and breathing. Start doing some brain fitness. You know, um, we can share a free link if you want. I mean, they can go and download my book, Thrive and Overdrive. They can read that at braintap.info and they get 15 days on the app. They can go try that out for free. No credit card necessary. They can just get on there Put it in there. And then at 15 days, if you like it, you can sign up. But if you don't, it just goes away. But I, I want everybody to try it. You know, when, when I tried it right away, when I was I was an angry young kid, you know, I tell the story. I thought God's only job was to make my life miserable until I realized that, you know, God was trying to show me how to how to do what I needed to do. And I wasn't listening. And, you know, I do believe in that everything happens like you're talking about synchronicity. You know, I'm so many times I'll be talking about somebody that I haven't talked about in a while. They'll text me or call yeah. me, you know, things like that. I, there is a connection here and people need to understand there is a connection, you know, in the blue zones that are around the world that talk about people who live the longest and the best lives, they have a support group. So figure out who your support group is and find people that aren't energy vampires, but mm -hmm. that are going to, you know, help you to grow and learn where you're at, you know, instead of, you know, there's a lot of reasons to be angry and upset with everything going on. But the reality is that this is the best time in the history of the world to be on the planet. And we have a chance right now to rewrite how it's going to turn out. So I think we'd stay positive and, and we work for that. Oh, love, love, love it. Like I said, we'll have to have you back because this is so packed full. Um, love the work you're doing. Thank you for making such a difference. Thank you for not retiring <laughs> because we're all so grateful. Um, all the links you shared, um, I'll be sure and get those from you and share if you're listening to this, wherever you're listening, you can find the links. Um, and Dr. Porter, thank you. Thank you for being the human being that you are and bringing light and love and progress and solutions to the world. Well, thank you, Dr. Jill. We're out to better a billion brains and you know whoever's listening, that's the brain we're talking about now. So let's do Amen. it. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you.